I'm your host for the most local 23. You're joining me for Bloodbound Dark Solstice Chapter 3 Silent Night Unholy Night. You've arrived at Ebenezer's Castle for the Dark Solstice. Together with your friends, you file out of the train. Wow, it's really a castle. A literal castle. Amazing, right? Jack squints up at the imposing stone structure. I don't like it. What? Why? Who doesn't like a castle? It's too big. Even if I knew the layout, I couldn't possibly secure a place like this. All I see is a big stone death trap. Jax? What's safer than a castle? I mean, like, an actual, literal fortress. They built these things to keep out armies. Armies of men, not whatever the hell we're fighting. I mean, last time we fought whatever the hell those things were, ferals. But I guess we could get some catapults, a couple barrels of burning pitch, one of those uh, ballistas they have on the Game of Thrones. Take him by the arm. We'll be fine, Jax. I trust Camilla. Ahem. If you two are finished, may we proceed inside? It's barbarically cold out here. You head inside where you are greeted by a tall, stern-faced vampire dressed in expensive-looking Victorian air clothing. Good evening, Camilla. Adrian. Ebenezer, thank you for agreeing to take up hosting duties this year. It seemed unavoidable. Unavoidable? An epic vampire shindig in a creepy castle? Who'd want to avoid that? Anyone with goat sense, I mean the cost alone. This guy is Marcel's uncle. Are, are you... Are we sure? An honorary relationship born of affection stemming from centuries-long association and not ties of doubt. Could someone translate? I think he's saying they were like family. You probably get real close to anyone you've spent a few centuries with. You'd be surprised. Maybe he means Marcel grew on him over the centuries, like Mole, Fabius party-loving Mole. I assure you, there is no mold here. Why, even the insinuation... Hang on, hang on. Your name is Ebenezer, you're rich, cranky, and you're not excited about the holidays. Lily. Oh, here we go. Ebenezer, Scrooge, any relation? Or maybe some inspiration? How dare you! The impudence, the disrespect, the sheer audacity! To come into my home and insult me so. Ebenezer turns and stalks away, anger in every line of his body. I suppose I should deal with that. As I, Camilla, sweeps after him. Don't take it personally, Lily. Ebenezer is sensitive about that topic. None of us honestly expected the story would become so popular. He does not enjoy it. You mean it's true? Oh, yes. Charles Dickens was extremely involved in the vampire community. That is so goth. So was he. Laughing, you follow a footman up the stairs along a twisting path before he stops in front of the door. The bedroom is luxurious. The walls are lined with gorgeous, priceless art, and king-sized bed is draped in satin duvet and covered in a mountain of pillows. Lily launches herself onto, the ba onto her back on the pile. I just want to be a princess. Is that too much to ask? You throw yourself on the bed next door and sink deeply into the soft comforter. You'd miss the city. Admit it, you would go stir crazy in weeks, tops. You need streaming video and takeout. Also, video games. Especially takeout. Somehow I'm doubting any cook Ebene Ebenezer employs can whip us up 3 a.m. sushi. That's probably good, though. With a holiday log, we'd end up all puking from food poisoning. Lily, no. No more negativity. This year, we break your holiday curse. <clears throat> people have said that before. Yeah, but I'm not people. I'm your badass roommate who helped take down an evil vampire senator. I'll eat that curse for breakfast. Extremely weird, but I'm into it. You're also dead. The curse broke with you the minute you became a vampire, I'm just saying. You clamber off the bed and grin. And we start now. Are you ready to check out the party? Heck yeah. 
Lily bounces nimbly off the bed, but stops in front of an open wardrobe. Ooh, look at this! Joining her, you see an elaborate holiday gown hanging in the closet. Oh my god, you have to try it on. It was clearly meant for you. You think so? Holiday cheer. I'll accept it, it's red and black. You spin around showing off the way the skirt flares out. You look amazing. Yeah? Lily pulls out her cell phone and names it at you. And for the final touch, sing Santa, baby. Lily, stop. Come on, put a little Marilyn into it. You descend the stairs and into the ballroom. Only to find Adrian waiting for you at the bottom of the stairs. And what in the hell is that? You look... Fancy? I was gonna say breathtaking. No, you're breathtaking! Oh. I told you, you're smoking on. <clears throat> well, that's better than fancy. Welcome to the dark solstice. I want to show you something. You too, Lily. It's something of a tradition. What, this giant pylon? He leads you to the center of the ballroom where a massive obsidian obelisk towers over the guests. Dak stands at the base with several of his clan, all of them studying the surface. As you join them, you realize it's covered in names. Amy. You look amazing. Well, thank you. So, what's with the obelisk? <gasps> this is the greatest monument of vampire history there is. Really? Mmm. Okay, Witcher. He reaches out to trace his fingers over a name carved in the surface. When you look closer, you realize it's his. Every time a new vampire attends the solstice for the first time, they carve their name here. So... We maybe should have done the solstice after the events of everything. So it would be more, I don't know, meaningful as they carve our name into it. It's an unbroken record of every solstice going back to the first. Wow, that's amazing. It is, and now... He slips a pair of carving tools and from his pocket and hands one to Lily and the other to Jax. Lily, Jax, you and your people are part of that legacy. Oh man, carving my name into an ancient vampire of obelisk to secure my place in history? Crossing that off my bucket list. That was not on your bucket list. Well, I'm retroactively adding in. Jax turns the tools over in his hands, looking unexpectedly moved. Until one of the Baron's men walks past, muttering, Clan the sewer trash. What the hell did you just... But before he can finish, Clark Camilla firmly takes his shoulder. Matsuo, not tonight. Fine, your lucky day, asshole. Baron's man scurries away, and Camilla joins you in front of the obelisk. You look remarkable, Amy, by the way. An absolute vision. Thank you. I knew you would. That's why I had the dress put in your room. Oh, this was your handiwork. Mila just shrugs, her lips curved into a smirk as her gaze skates over you once more, and she turns back to Jax. Ignore the Baron's mean. I was the first to carve my name into the obelisk. No one has more say than who over who deserves the honor. If you didn't deserve it, you would not be here. All of us, we are honored to have you here. Jax lets out a deep breath, and you can see how much this means to him. Thank you. Lily and Jax turn to the obelisk, both clearly moved by the gravity of what they're doing. As they begin to call off their names, you catch sight of another of Baron's men walking towards the group, clearly ready to cause trouble. Oh, for God's sakes. I should tell Camilla, confront him, casually trip him. Wait until he's about to pass behind you and stealthily stick your foot on. We lit ah! He goes sprawling across the marble floor, sliding a little with the force of his fall. All around the room, vampires break into laughter. I was doing a bit. A, a bit! He scrambles to his feet and hurries away, chased by more laughter. I think that's called karma. You turn back in time to see Lily and Jax finishing up. Camilla kisses each on her cheek, her smile unusually warm. Welcome to the family. You were not kidding. You do take this holiday seriously. Yes, I do. 
Do I get to carve my name in too? Of course, child. You're all part of the family now. Here. Arna lifts Lula up and tears prick your eyes as she catches her tongue between her teeth in concentration. Here, love. I'll... I can do it, then you do it next. We'll all do it. Finally, all their names have been added. Jack smooths his thumb over his name and smiles. More emotional because they're all dead. Oh, don't tell me I spoiled that for Bloodbound Book 2. Never thought I'd see the day. Adrian claps Jack's on the back with a laugh. Honestly, neither did I, but it's a good day. On the opposite side of the room, a group of musicians strikes up a cheerful tune. Lula's eyes brighten with excitement. Ooh, ooh, can we dance? What? You think I wore my dancing shoes for no reason? Come on. Liv takes Lula's hand and leads her onto the dance floor. There soon they're spinning and laughing as Jax watches on. Well, I'm glad they're having fun. Now you should have some fun. Make sure he does, Amy. Would you? Of course. Where are we going? Where are you going? The, the table's full of fancy goblets filled with the finest blood. I don't know about you, Matsu, but uh, I'm ready to see how the other half lives. As you watch Arnold walk away, something catches your eye. A fragment of a photograph peeking out from underneath the base of the obelisk. Don't worry. My first hijink is relaxing. How about we get you off your feet? This sounds promising. And into a horse-drawn carriage. Hmm, it's Lily. Interesting. You touch the fragment, and as you do, you're pulled into a memory. Which is weird, because, you know. Sorry I'm late, my cab got a flat. That's okay, you're here now. Are you ready for a night of epic hijinks and holiday cheer? How epic. I had back-to-back -back meetings all day. Oh, if you're too tired, we could... No, I'm here now. We might as well do it. Don't worry, my first hijink is relaxing. How about we get you off your feet? This sounds promising. And into a horse-drawn carriage. <clears throat> I know, awesome, right? Oh, uh, yeah, awesome. Lily excitedly pulls Milani in across the street to a waiting carriage and holds out a hand to help her. Inside, there's a bouquet of red and white roses mixed with mistletoe and a waiting bottle of champagne. Isn't it awesome? Okay, I guess it's kind of charming. They settle in as the carriage takes off, rattling beneath the clear night sky. Isn't it romantic? It's a little cheesy. But I mean, cheesy is fun sometimes too, right? Her smile grows determined. Lily reaches for the champagne, but before she can open it, a sharp crack echoes through the night and the carriage starts to tilt. Ah! What the hell? The champagne goes flying, tumbling out of the carriage to shatter on the sidewalk. The broken wheel splits entirely and Lily Melania barely stay upright as the back part of the carriage thumps to the street. Ouch. I'm going to have bruises. I'm sorry, I'm so, I'm so sorry. You need to get out, quickly. It's fine. We're okay. I'm not okay. Lily scrambles out of the carriage and reaches back for Melania. Or Melanie, excuse me. Okay, this one is a bust, but don't worry. The next one is even better. Lily's determined smile doesn't waver as she leads her date down the sidewalk. I have reservations at the best restaurant. The little Italian place you've wanted to go for so long. Really? Yeah, I had to make them months ago and call in about three favors, but we got a table waiting for us. Looking happier now, Melanie hurries her steps. The date almost seems to be recovered until... Smoke. Oh no. They turn the corner and see a crowd huddled outside the little Italian restaurant, including several fire trucks and one distraught chief. Chef. Thirty years I've run a restaurant and never had a grease fire like this. In moments, my whole kitchen went up. Oh no, this is all my fault. Ah, how is it this your fault? I shouldn't have made reservations for Christmas Eve. This again. Come on, Lily, it's silly to think that your bad luck caused a kitchen to blow up. 
But what if... Melanie fixes Lily with a stern look, and Lily drops it. She rocks on her heels for a moment, straightening up. Oh, one of my favorite food carts isn't far from here. I bet they're still open. Maybe we should just call it a night. I'm freezing and tired. No, come on. I swear, they have the best falafel in town. Promise this will be worth it. Well... Let me, let me, let me, okay, Lily, I know you're a little dense, I know you tried this evening, but when your date is extremely tired when she first shows up, and you're making her walk through snow, and everything's gone horrifically wrong, the best bet for you to do is literally go home and plan something at home. For me, please. Alright, fine, how far away is it? Not far at all. The two step to the curb, just as a cab speeds off. The tires splash through muddy slush, which... Splatters all over Mel Melanie. Ah! Oh! oh no. Melanie's slacks and blouse are ruined. Mud splatters her jacket. Slushy snow drips from her pants. She lets out a frustrated shriek that draws the attention of passerby. Okay, that's it. The night officially sucks, I'm calling it. Wait, j just, just a second. I know this night isn't totally gone as planned, but... Gone as planned? No, this is something else. You're definitely cursed. That's what, that's what does it. Mud on an outfit, that, yep, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're an idiot. I know. I, I could walk you home. No, it's okay. We'd probably end up hitting by, by a bus or something. Have a good Christmas, Lily. You too. Melanie stalks off before Lily can say any, something else and leaving her standing alone on the sidewalk. So much for breaking the curse. Looking dejected, Lily shovels her hands in her pockets and turns to walk home. Hey, Lily. I just finished unpacking the last of my stuff. Oh, man. You look like you had a bad night. Just the worst holiday date ever of my life. Hold that on. You look like you need wine. Oh, God. I need so much wine. Good thing I bought a bottle. Or three. See, look, your holiday curse was broken right there, because we came into your life. I knew you were going to be a good roommate. If wine is all it takes, I'm going to be the best roommate. So, should we talk about how this date clearly doesn't deserve you? Or is this uh, more of a drink and watch crappy horror movies night? Every night is a drink and watch horror movies night. Thanks, Amy. See, look, we changed your luck by coming into your life. Look at that. Hey, anytime, Lily. Well, I believe this is the last fra- oh, God help me. Okay, so it looks like we're all sitting on a couch, and it looks like Adrian is going to be the final fragment. Oh, one more chapter. I'm fine with that. It's bloodbound. You sway, sure that something important just happened, but the vision has faded to the warm feeling of family. And you watch as more and more vampires join the dancing. But, as joyous as the celebration seems, it also is clear that most of the vampires are socializing and dancing with their own clans. Camilla has clearly noticed, too, her brow furrows slightly. It's a miracle enough you got everyone here, Camilla. I don't want you to be disappointed if... No. She holds up her hand, her expression clearing. It's a dark solstice. The day we set aside our differences and come together, it has happened in the face of war, plague, and natural disaster. It will happen tonight. But in silence, lingers, and Camilla clears her throat. Ahem, I do believe it's time for a waltz. Right, yes, that. Dance around the room as vampires take the floor to courtly pairs. I'm dancing with Adrian. It would be my pleasure. Adrian offers his arm, you slip your hand through it, and let him lead you to, to the dance floor. Do you know how to waltz? Um, is that one where you kind of go in a square? No, that's a square dance. Yes. Don't worry, I'll lead. That sounds good. He you guides your hand to his shoulder and settles his warm fingers at the small of your back. I didn't know how to doll waltz either. and my first dark solstice, Camilla was appalled. That sounds about right. I didn't even want to be here. The loss of my family was still raw. There seemed to be little enough to celebrate. I'm sorry, Adrian. It was many years ago, and Camila, well, you've seen how she is. She pulled me aside, 
taught me enough to get by, and then she made me practice for the whole year so I'd be perfect for the next solstice. Her tutelage clearly worked, Adrian guides you through the dance so gracefully it looks like your feet barely touch the floor. Your body brushes with every turn, and he smiles down at you. I've come to appreciate a proper waltz. You're very good at it. If you're enjoying yourself, all the centuries of worth of pra practice are uh, worth it. He spins you again, his hands strong at your back, and you let the quiet intimacy wash over you. It's just you and Adrian, and the way you move together, and it's perfect. Finally, the dancings, you make your way to the massive banquet table, which is heaped with food and drink. All kinds of drink. Arnold had the right idea. She lifts a hammered golden goblet, brimming with blood. Mmm. Fancy blood. Nom 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 nom. You are so weird. As Lily enjoys her blood, you drift down the table to where the Baron is sampling some of the whiskey Camilla brought. Ooh, if there's one thing I'll say for her, she has fine taste. <sighs> You're enjoying the whiskey. The first time that you can remember the Baron doesn't scowl. Instead, he swirls the amber liquid in his glass. Yes, this one in particular. It was aged in port casks. You can tell from the taste. That reminds me of my childhood. You drank whiskey as a child? Oh. My father would sit in front of the fire in his study after dinner with a cigar and a glass of port. He smiles wistfully at the memory, then pours the second glass and holds it out wordlessly. Maybe Camille is right. The Baron being nice? This is a holiday miracle. You accept the glass, the Baron clinks his against yours before sipping his liquor. Tentatively, you follow suit. The whiskey is amazing, velvety smooth, with hints of... chocolate and orange? Yes, it's good to know you're not entirely lacking in taste. Deciding you've tested the holiday miracle enough, you finish your drink and retreat back to Lily's side. Uh, am I drunk on fancy blood, or was the Baron being kind of nice to you? He was being way less stickhead than usual, for sure. Amazing. So, now that we've had an, uh, some liquid fortification, wanna go explore the creepy vampire castle with me? Do you think we should? Uh, yes? What if there are dungeons? And or dragons? This is an opportunity we cannot pass up. This is a chance to explore the castle secrets with Lily and share a special moment. Well, yeah, let's do it! Wait until no one is looking before slipping out the door. Lily grabs your hand and you laugh as you race down the hallway. As you reach the end, you hear footsteps coming down the staircase. Crap! Come on. You push open the closet door and grab Lily, pulling her into a dimly lit room. As you ease the door shut, a footman hurries past, muttering to himself. Marcel wouldn't have tolerated such sloppy planning. Lily picks a door seemingly at random and pushes it open to reveal... Whoa, an armory. Cool. Okay, now I kind of want us to get attacked. What do they do with all of it? You turn the slow circle, taking in the walls full of weapons, swords, crossbows, axes, spears, things you don't even know how to have a name for. I wonder if they have tournaments, jousts, vampire melees, battle royales. He pulls a broad sword off the wall and strikes a dramatic pose. Fortnite is not a battle royale, I'm just saying. What do you think? Um, you look badass. Like your character in that game, where you're always dying? Dark Souls. And that's not comforting. Mmm, so I'm gonna pixel bury those Dark Souls. I give you a small clap. You know what I mean. I do. Lily gives the sword an experimental swing. Now roll! Roll! Begin rolling! No, I'm kidding. You could always ask Jax for lessons, you know. I don't really want to learn, I just want to smash. Hmm. No, that's not how Dark Souls works. Puts the sword back on the wall and tucks you towards the door. Come on, let's check out the tower. Find a set of narrow stairs and climb until you're breathless. They end in an ornate wooden door with an ominous engraving. 
Is that a giant spider web? With sword stuck through it. What do you think this is in there? Only one way to find out. Turns the knobs and halls open the door to reveal. And I thought my room was fancy. The bedroom spreads out before you, lit by candles, trapped behind stained glass. Every bit of the wall is covered with art. Wow, that bed. I noticed. Can uh, we agree that this is definitely a vampire orgy bed? It 100% is. We should jump on it. She's like a child. What? But Lily is already moving. She scrambles up the steps and launches herself onto the bed. I have never jumped on my bed. Ever. I know, I, I heard I missed out on a childhood, but it's okay. I dare you. Okay, fine. You kick off your shoes and jump on the bed with Lily. Oh my god, what is this bed made of? Baby kangaroos? It's bouncy, but something somehow so soft. Right? Wait. Try to double bounce me. Um, I think that only works on trampolines. You can do anything if you just try hard enough. Are you trying to break the bed? Do you start bouncing with renewed fervor until suddenly you hear a sharp crack, the bed tilting just a little. Whoa. Uh, maybe that's enough bouncing. <clears throat> you slide gingerly off the bed and Lily backs away, whistling a little tune as the two of you leave the room. And here I bet all of you thought it was going to go bone chicka wow wow. Lily grabs her hand, you sneak down the stairs. When you reach the main floor, you pause. The stairs keep going down, you know? What do you think's down there? Um, probably a dungeon. Totally a dungeon. It uh, would be a bad idea to sneak into a vampire dungeon. It would be a terrible idea. But we're going to do it anyway, so we're definitely doing it, right? Last one spends the night in an Iron Maiden. Laughing, you start down the stairs. The candles on the walls give way to flickering torches and shadows deepen. Finally, you reach a huge wooden door with a heavy bar across it. You try to lift it, but... Ugh. Won't budge. Let the vampire try it. Step aside. You move and Lily steps forward, grips the bar with one hand, and with a casual tug, she heaves the bar out of the way. Vampire strength has its perks. Um, it sure is useful. Next time we want to redecorate the apartment, you could lift the furniture one-armed. Doing charms seems like a waste of superpowers. Not if it gets them done faster so you can play video games with your adoring friend. Good point. Lily reaches for the door and pulls. Okay, here we go. Creepy vampire dungeon. The door swings open to reveal... Oh my god. What the hell? Is this... A vault? A treasure vault? This is amazing. Stretching out before you is a massive room lined in shells, filled with priceless artifacts. One corner is nothing but a pile of gold coins. Bowls of elegant marble, tables overflow with jewels that sparkle in the light with dozens of lamps. Lily walks to the closet, one closest one, and sticks her hand in. Diamonds trickle through her fingers. This is unreal. Quickly, let's steal it. Wait, look at this. You rush across the room to stand in front of a painting. One you've seen on the wall at the Met. Is this Van Gogh? No way. I've seen that one in the Met. That has to be a copy. Unless the one at the Met is the copy. No, that would fit on the train. Though it might be a little awkward to explain how it came to be in our apartment... Hanging over the microwave. We budget well. You drift away from the painting and run your fingers along some of the other treasures, ancient vases, and beautiful marble statues. That pile of gold might be big enough to swim in. And thus Ebenezer was born. And Ebenezer could probably come down here and count it every night before he goes to sleep. No question about it. As if your word summoned him, you hear heavy footsteps coming down the stairs and a very familiar grumble. So unruly, so wasteful. Crap. Quick, take his gold. <laughs> I 
Grabbing Lily's hand, you dash across the room to where a thick crimson curtains protect the floor to ceiling mural of the French countryside. You duck behind them just in time. Who is this? You hear the heavy bar drag across the floor or outside, and footsteps. Someone here! If anything is missing... Yes, yes, you'll know. You're Ebenezer. You practically hold your breath as he starts to circle the room, checking each treasure. Lily moves so close you can feel her breath on your cheek. After what feels like an eternity, Ebenezer trudges out the door, still muttering. Put it at fools. Lily's lips scraze her cheek. You know, for a guy who's a vampire, he can't smell blood, really. You know what? Why not? You turn just enough to catch Lily's mouth with yours. Mmm. Her lips part and she turns, pushing you back into the wall. The curtains keep you secluded in the shadows as you wrap your arms around her neck. Lily's fingers trace your throat. Her fingertip circles your pulse. I can hear your heart racing. Yeah, whose fault is that? Your breath catches as her kisses trail down along your jaw and lower. Your breath tickles. Her breath tickles the most vulnerable part of your throat. Your head falls back as a shiver claims you. Lily... Mm. Her fangs graze your skin. Not enough to break the skin, but her thigh presses between yours, sparking a deep ache as you shudder under her mouth. Your entire body tenses, anticipating the pain and pleasure of a bite. Instead, she licks your flustering pulse before lifting your head to smile at you. You taste good. You're such a tease. Hey, we should always uh, circle back to the vampire orgy pen, but it's a good use. How about we wait until we find somewhere that's literally anywhere else? Hmm, good call. She steps out from behind the curtain and you follow her. But you have to admit, this was pretty cool. Which part? The part where we almost got caught by a uh, literal Ebenezer Scruzer's treasure bowl? But we didn't get caught. Maybe your holiday luck is changing. Maybe it is. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh, but I didn't just jinx us. You link your arm through Lily's and steer her towards the exit. I refuse to believe in. Come on, we've been gone long enough. Let's see what the others are up to. I'm telling you, we changed her luck, I'm just saying. And the fact that she's dead, became a vampire, her curse was wiped out the minute she died. You make it back up the stairs and into the main room without getting caught. Suddenly a voice rises from the far end of the buffet table. Take it off at once! Come sit on my lap. Tell Lester what you want for Christmas. I hate this more than anyone has ever hated anything. If he's bothering you so much, just walk away. No, she's just fun. Aren't you, my little? If you say it again, I will shove that hat up your ass, rip it through your mouth, and then shove it back up your ass. That is stupid. Ho, ho, ho. You know I love that. Mia appears at your side, rubbing either side of her temples with both hands. Hmm, they've been at it for ten minutes already. Don't worry, I can handle this. Mm, distract Lester. Hey Lester, are you the only one who uh, ordered a bunch of uh, strippers dressed like elves? What? No, I, I mean, uh, why do you ask? Oh, I just saw a bunch of them outside. Saying something about a dumpster? Right, well, uh, if you excuse me, I uh, need some <clears throat> fresh uh, air. Lester wanders off, whistling to himself. Priya turns to you with a smile. Well, well, that was almost clever of you. That was cleverer than what you told him. Um, thanks? Shh. Why? Shh. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to invite you to the post solstice orgy. The, the what now? I know it! On the one hand, you're being very interesting tonight. On the other, someone else might break you before I get to play with you. Um, uh, oh, uh, thanks. Anyway, but I think I hear someone calling us. Make a hasty escape when you glance back. Priya's still tapping her finger against her chin watching you. You really think Priya's having a post solstice orgy? Definitely, which is so hot, but scary? And hot. But weird. Also hot? 
But there is zero chance it doesn't end in me dead. Oh, foreshadowing. Raleigh, but what a way to go. Death by snoo snoo, as they call it. As you cross the room, you catch a familiar voice in the din. It sounds angry. That's not a threat, it's a promise. Is that so? Uh, Lil, catch up with you. Follow the bickering and make a beeline for Jax and one of Baron's men. What's a child like you gonna do about it? For starters, I'll... You loop your arm through Jax's. Hey Jax, Adrian's looking for you. The two men exchange another glare before Jax reluctantly gives in to your tugging on his arm. When you're a few feet away, he sighs. What does Adrian need? Nothing, I just wanted to get you out of there. I don't need to hide behind Adrian. I didn't mean it like that, I just... I thought you might like a break. He shoves his hands through his hair. No, you're right, I do need a break. He stares down at you, his gaze intense. Let's get out of here. Yeah? Yeah, let's take a walk, just the two of us. This is your chance to spare to take a special moonlight walk with Jack, see the woods, and have a special moment. Why not? It's a dark solstice. Technically, since it's the, what, end of book one, we haven't really committed to a relationship, per se. Jack Jacks his hand and twine your fingers together. Come on, let's go. As you step into the crisp night air, Jack breathes a weary sigh. We are literally wearing hardly anything, I'm just saying. Out in the winter cold. I'm sorry for fighting back there. I'm trying not to cause trouble. It's hard. The clanless are my people. All I've ever known is fighting for them. You're still fighting for them, and they know it. By the way, can I borrow your jacket? It's a little fucking cold out here. Thank you. And, but it's okay to take a night off from fighting and just enjoy yourself. Is it? Yes, I promise. He squeezes your hand as you walk through the open portcullis towards the snow-covered forest. They don't seem to have much in the way of fortifications. No walls, really, just gates. They probably thought they didn't need them. Or Marcel, who was wrong about that. I hate that you had to go through that. Adrian and Camille have, should have protected you better. They did protect us. They got us out alive. He sighs. It's hard to believe I'm one of them now. I don't feel like I'm one of them. And I can tell they still don't see me as one of them. I have to... Give them time. I mean, you've seen the castle. Change doesn't seem to be their biggest strength. Adrian certainly hasn't had trouble keeping up with technology. No, Adrian's different. He does believe in change. And he believed in giving you a chance. The rest will come around. You're always so optimistic. You know what else I am usually am? Warm. We're out in the middle of nowhere with... Just never mind. One. Right. Yeah, you usually are. So listen to me, enjoy yourself tonight. He laughs, the rich sound warming, the chilly night air. Fine, so how do I start? A romantic walk in the woods would be nice. I can do that. The two of you stroll deeper into the trees. Snow dusts the towering pines. The moon breaks through to sparkle over and touch snow. A cold breeze whips through the trees and you shiver. Hair. Dax holds out his arm to you and you duck under it. Slipping your arm around his waist under his jacket, he rubs your arm gently as you nuzzle in the clothes. Better? Much. What would you be doing if you hadn't got roped into a vampire solstice? All the usual stuff, cookies, eggnog, frantic last minute shopping, and then collapsing on the couch with takeout. What about you? I usually try to make some sort of celebration for my people. Most of them couldn't afford to do much. Most of us, uh, those of us who would, uh, could, would put something together. We made sure everyone knew they had us. Well, they had the, they had the family. Yeah, that's basically it. See, you're natural at this leader thing. You're strong, protective, and brave. Now you're just flattering me. Do you like it? I wouldn't mind a few more adjectives. How about caring, sweet, kind, 
Careful, you're gonna ruin my badass reputation. Haven't you heard? Cinnamon rolls are the new badass. I don't know if I want to know what that means. You're like a big gooey warm cinnamon roll. It's a compliment. I promise. Walk on in silence for a few minutes, enjoying the picturesque forest and the perfect blanket of stars overhead. And then you step through a break in the trees and into a clearing and come face to face with a majestic stag. Ooh, look, it's Harry Potter stag. Wow. Stag paces closer, holding its head high and watching you with intelligent eyes. Oh. It finally stops in front of you and bends its head, almost as if inviting you to pet it. Are we supposed to reach out and lightly touch its head? A feeling of wonder fills you as you gently stroke its soft fur. It's okay. Just move slowly. Um, that's fine. I don't want to piss it off. You won't if you're gentle. After another moment, Jax tentatively reaches out to stroke the stag's head. As he pets the wild creature, his eyes soften. Some of the guarded toughness that always seems to shroud him falls away, and you see his own wonder. Wow. Uh-huh. Finally, the stag steps back and pivots. It launches itself into the trees and speed. The speed, breathtaking. That was wild, literally. I'm a city boy, and all this country stuff is new to me. Well, I can't say uh, guesting as a spooky vampire castle is uh, exactly country life. But I could teach you a few winter holiday traditions from back home. Like what? Um, one of my favorites is snow tubing, building snow forts, snowball fights, duh. Ah, I'm gonna go snow forts. You can build snow forts out of snow. Uh, totally. I mean, in some places they build entire castles out of snow. It's true. But why? Because you get to be a child. Because snow is fun. Oh, I've got the perfect tradition for you. You take a step back and spread your arms wide before falling backward in the snow. Ah, the classic holiday tradition called getting frostbite. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. No, snow angels. Something easy, safe, that everyone can enjoy. Also, all you do is lay down and flap your arms and legs like so. You start to squirm in the snow, extending and retracting your limbs until you've created a sized crater of you in the ice. And Viola, one snow angel. How does it look? Before you can get a look at your creation, a flurry of snow showers down on you from your right. Jax! Look over to see Jax working furiously to create his own snow angel and in the process pushing all of his snow into yours. What am I doing it wrong? You look down at where your angel used to be, you fake pout on your lips. You murdered my snow angel. This means war! With a furious roar, you start shoveling snow into Jax's angel. Hey! A life for a life is no way to live. Starts tossing snow back at you, and before you know it, you're in an all-out war. You'll never take us alive. For queen and country. Ax lunges forward and tackles you oh, softly back in the snow, hovering over you and breathing hard. Looks like I won. Yes, again. Huh? Then distracted, you grab a handful of snow and dump it down the back of his collar. Ah! Go, 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 go! You were saying? Jack shakes the snow out of his hair, sending it drifting down on you. Fine, I concede. Claim your prize. A prize, huh? How about a kiss? Why not? Jack brings himself closer, his lips hovering just above yours. I'd take this uh, over a win any day. You part your lips to reapply, but his mouth is suddenly there, covering yours, warm, intent, his kiss hungry. He kisses you like he's savoring the taste of you. His tongue teases your lower lip before seeking yours. Mmm. He rolls to his back and pulls you on top of him. His hand finds its way to the back of your neck as his other's hand slides down the small of your back. Your kiss shifts from hot to blazing as the need courses through you. You shudder in his grip, your knees sliding down either side of his hips to sink in the snow. Oh. 
You're only allowed the small moan of ecstasy before his lips find yours again, kissing you deeply before traveling down your jawline, your neck. His mouth closes over your pulse and you realize you're rocking against him, guided by the hand at the small of your back. Feels too good. There's no such thing. You deserve to feel good. You deserve everything. You close your eyes and give in to the feeling, savoring the pleasure, but suddenly his mouth is gone and you whimper in protest. Don't stop. Beck sits up effortlessly, smiling as he smooths your hair back down into place. It's snowing. You should get back inside before you get too cold. And die. Ha 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 ha. Surprisingly, you tilt your head back, snowflakes spiraling down from the sky, settling on your flushed cheeks. Oh, I didn't even notice. What, that you were cold wearing that? Yeah, okay. I'll take that as a compliment. Rejoin the others just in time for Ebenezer to come out. The music dies down and he climbs onto the dais. We are gathered here tonight on this a most holy of nights to celebrate the most, both the tentative of our survival and those we have lost. If you would all take a glass. Footmen drift through the crowd holding out trays. You take a glass of bright, bubbly champagne from one. Most of the vampires take blood served to delicate crystal glasses. With when everyone is holding a drink, Ebenezer lifts his to our Paul the sailor, whose joy and celebration gave us the castle. Let us celebrate him the way he would celebrate us. Our well, dear Marcel. You remember the moment of Marcel's death too vividly, you shudder and lift your glass. Everyone repeats after Camilla, and after a moment of silence, everyone drinks, then Ebenezer lifts his glass again. To the friends who are no longer a with us, but who will always be a part with of us? Crowd echoes the toast and drinks again. And finally, to our dear Camilla, the one who left among us remembers the, that first dark sources. She keeps the meaning of this holiday alive for us all. To Camilla. The rest of the assembled vampires echo the toast for a moment. Camilla looks deeply moved, then a usual reserved smile returns. Thank you. Zenobi and Ezer climbs off the stage, the musician strikes up a merry tune, and the large clock in the hallway strikes midnight. Look at that, Lily. At what? I think your curse might be... No, don't say it. Never say it. A boom sounds above. What was that? That sounded bad. I told you... All the assembled vampires gaze up at the high ballroom ceiling, for a tense moment, no one speaks. No one breathes. Then the ceiling shatters open. Debris rains down as vampires scream and dodge for cover. What the hell? Look out! Adrian grabs you and pulls you out of the way of a chunk of concrete. You both look up in time to see the Red Saint crashing through the ceiling. Abominations! <laughs> so remember to like, share, and subscribe. And now, description below links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. Which, speaking of which, we've been streaming. <laughs> streaming a bit more. We've been doing Kind Words. It's a wonderful app where you send out letters to people who are in. Uh, you know, need of, of some help, some advice, some love, you know, things like that. Um, <clears throat> there's also Escape from Tarkov, in case you didn't know, I play that now. And uh, then we started Final Fantasy VII, the old one, not the new one. The remake's coming out in a couple months, though, but I will be picking that up. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of games we're doing right now on stream. So if you don't already follow me on Twitch, please do so. Um, and check out that content. Without further ado, thank you all once again for watching. I will catch you all tomorrow for Desire and Decorum, the first winner, and then Monday for Baby Bump. God help us. Bye!